We're so glad that you're here. So glad that you're here today. Thank you for being a part of our service this morning. And a happy Father's Day to all of our guys. And uh, welcome here. And we're glad that you're here. We had a great crowd in the first service. And uh, the good, this is a good crowd here in the second service. And I love it seeing our men lead the way, taking their family to church here this morning. And uh, those who are watching online, maybe you couldn't make it for what, one reason or the other. We're glad that you're watching with us, wherever you might be. And uh, as you leave, guys, there's a, a gift for all of our men, for all of our men. You know, so we've got a, you know, last year we, we handed out pocket knives. This year we're going to hand out another pocket knife. So, you know, just build your, you know, your arsenal of knives. And so the, another knife, a little bit smaller than last year. We've got our late point logo right here on the blade. And uh, so make sure you get one on your way out if you haven't received one yet. And uh, as you leave out here in the hallway. And uh, for all the guys, if you're, by the way, if you're under 16, and you want one, you got to make sure you get your mom or dad with you on that. So just make sure we don't want to turn them out to little kids. And we don't want, don't want that, okay? But, um, uh, but make sure all of our guys uh, grab one of these and have these beautiful knives. And, uh, and I know that you'll be blessed by that in different ways. You never know when you need it. So anyway, um, but listen, um, if you're a guest with us, thank you for being here. And uh, as you came in, you should receive a program. Inside the program, the connection card. We ask you to take a minute, fill that card out. And then after the service, on your way out, you can drop it in one of our offering boxes throughout the building. We've got one here in the back of the room, some out here in the hallway. And I just let us know about your visit with us. And also, I'd love to meet you. And if, again, if this is your first time, I'd love to meet you after the service. And I got a free gift. I'd love to hand, and hand you a gift. And I, and I thank you for being here today. And so thank you for being here. This week, as you came in, you noticed know, vacation Bible school decoration. And so that's kicking off tomorrow night. So it's not too late to sign up your kids. So get your kids signed up and, uh, and uh, get them registered. You go to our website, you know, latepointchurch.org slash events, and uh, you can get your kids signed up today. And uh, it could be a great, great week of BBS. It could be a hot week, but we're going to make it work. It could be awesome, and uh, the kids are going to love it. And we're, we're praying for God to make a, a spiritual impact on, our, on all of our kids this week. And, I know BBS in my life growing up has always been a powerful, powerful week for me, you know, and a life change moment that I've, I've experienced when I was a kid. And so I know it'll be the same this week. And so I'm looking forward to that. And so as, as some of you know, some of you know, a, a couple of weeks ago, I was um, gone and I was in Africa. I, I came back last Sunday and talked very briefly about it, but I, you know, so many have asked about it and want to kind of share a little bit more today before we get into the message today. Today we're going to kind of wrap up our series um, for Christian, but before that, let's talk about Africa and where we went, and I went to the country of Tanzania, and uh, it's a beautiful country just south of the equator. 17% of the population of Tanzania are believers. The other, 17, the other 83% of the population are either um, pagan Witchcraft which was very popular, um, and especially when you get away from the city. Um, in a lot of those little villages, there's a, there's a prominent witch doctor. There's a, you know, paganism, very heavy involved. In the bigger cities, you, you, there's kind of a mixed bag of, 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 of Muslim and uh, Catholicism, and, uh, and so there's kind of a mixed bag as well as the pagan beliefs and some of the witch doctors that are in the big cities. So it's really, really... Uh, dark uh, country when it comes to the gospel. And, uh, and, and so we went there and, um, and, and able to see what God is doing behind the scenes. So a, a, I, would, I, I would like to call it a revival of a sort. And uh, you'll just see that in a few minutes with some of the stories here I'm about to say. But I, I like to say the best way to describe it is, is that the book of Acts, I, I was able to see the book of Acts unfolding. And it's wonderful to see what God is doing to Christians in the churches that have been started. There's a, there's a goal to start a church in every village, not just in Tanzania, but in, in all of Africa and in all parts of the dark corners of our planet. And we're working with the organization, I flew with an organization, mission board called the Timothy Initiative. And they flew us out there and their goal is to finish the Great Commission. You know, the Acts 1-8, you know, we've got Jerusalem figured out, we've got Judea and Samaria. The, the Timothy Initiative is trying to figure out and it's working the, the strategy of, of getting the final part of Acts 1-8, you know, to uttermost, the dark, 
the dark corners of our planet. And Tanzania, being one of those dark corners, and see how it played out. And, um, and, and I met so many uh, faithful Christians that are just knocking it out for the gospel. I got a couple pictures here. Here's the first one. The, the, the guy on the left, his name is Pastor Samuel. And, and the guy on the right is Pastor Alex. So Pastor Samuel on the left, he is what I would like to call the Billy Graham of Tanzania. He has started more churches than I ever can imagine. You know, and just, you know he, he led Pastor Alex to the Lord back in the days. And, and now Pastor Alex is starting churches. These guys are called movement leaders. They, in fact, they are responsible for training and developing you know, church planters and pastors, you know, throughout the country of Tanzania. The pastor Alex, he's just, uh, uh, you, you can tell, he's just sharp, Mr. GQ. In fact, you, you want to find a more sharp-dressing man than Pastor Alex there. I mean, I love this guy. Got, he got dress shoes. I mean, we're walking in the village, you know, there's no grass, it's all dirt, and he is just, you know, he's just popping. I mean, I love it. And uh, Pastor Alex, you know, we're talking to him, and, uh, and his, his impact on the gospel is just incredible. He, he had led a, a man to the Lord, and, and before that man became known to Christ, his father, this man's father, was a very prominent witch doctor. And, and he had passed away, and, and, and it was uh, assumed that the son would become the next Heir to the to the you know to the dad position as the head was doctor of the religion of that of that belief and so you know and so he had to be you know the village they tied the father the dead the dead dad father to the son body for seven days part of that was the ritual of translating the powers from his dad to his son and then after his son after seven days he was commission to do something to seal the deal. And there's something that's totally unheard of here. And it's heartbreaking here, but he had, and this is just a way of life, unfortunately, but he had to sacrifice his own wife and kids. His name is Jacob. And Jacob had to do all this, and he did. He became the witch doctor. And behind that religious facade, the broken man. Pastor Alex ran across him one day in the village. Started talking to him about the Lord. Pastor Jacob, over conversations, several conversations, his eye was open. And Jacob, eyes were open to the truth. And became a believer. And now Jacob. It Pastor Jacob, somewhere in the middle of Tanzania, started a church. The former witch doctor. I mean, only God great could do what, what happened here. And here's a man that's out there. And the Pastor Alex, the Pastor Samuel, the, 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 the doys upon doys like this. See the next picture right here is at the church plant that I happen to be a part of. This is a church plant that's about four to five months old. And since the church started, they, they run about 150 people now. That when over 50 people come to know Christ, and it was all started by a 17-year-old girl who went to a two-year Bible training and came back and said, "I'm going to start a church. No one else can do it. I'm going to start a church." It started a church, and there's no building, there's no, you know, there's, there's no, you know, walls. It's just out here in the open. And and you see the picture. And, and that 17 year old girl, the pers- that girl on the far left in the white shirt, but she was led to the Lord by the girl on the right, who is also a church planter, and the girl on the right of her was led to the Lord by, you know, they all led each other to the Lord. This is seven generations of believers winning someone to Christ, winning someone to Christ, winning someone to Christ, and now they're all starting churches. It's incredible. And, and in this service, with the, I was a part of that 17 year old girl father became the eighth generation. He came forward during the invitation and, and gave his life to Christ. 
on that day. That's awesome. I mean, I'm seeing the book of Acts unfold and I've never seen before. God is at work. You know, and we were there for a few days. We saw, you know, church planting, different, different churches. You're walking through the village. Uh, they don't just have church on Sunday. They have church on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, they have church every day. And you can hear the music. You, you know when church is started by when the music and the, and, the, and the sound of the music filled the village. You start walking through, and you can hear the sound. God is doing some incredible stuff. You know, in, in just a few minutes, you're going to see a video. You're going to see some of these churches. You're going to see baptism. We baptized 20 people. You're going to see me. I almost got baptized by accident. You'll, you'll see that in a minute. <laughs> Not my, my most shining moment in Africa, but that's okay. <laughs> You'll see a graduation, 70 graduates. One of, the, one of the stories, I met a guy every other week. They, come, they have classes for three, four days a week. One of the guys, he would walk three hours. He would stay for three, four days. And then he goes home for a week. And then he comes back, three hour walk, three hours home. Three hour walk, going back and forth. Did that for two years. Because he saw how important it was to get to know the to know the God, the, the Bible, so that he could go home and start the church. The passion. And you see the passion in their faces, the joy. They don't have much. But you experience their joy here in this video. Here's one more before the picture, one more picture, this guy named Sam. He's a movement leader. He, over, he helped plant churches in Tanzania, Kenya. He helped start churches in um, Ethiopia and some other countries that I don't want to name due to security reasons. He's going through some of the most dangerous places of Africa to start churches and help, help pastors start churches. In fact, I would text, Sam text me this morning and said, hey man, pastor's got to want to pray for you. And it was one of my interpreters. And I said, how can you pray for us? I said, pray for our city. Many of you know, last night we had a, a, a random act of evil in a park nearby, two, three, hour, uh, two, three four miles from here. Tragic situation. And it's awesome to know that we have brothers and sisters in different languages, different tribes, are praying for you, praying for our city. And so before we show the video, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna, let's pray, let's pray for our city, pray for those that have been injured. And that's what I pray. I want you to check out this video. God, we thank you for what you are doing in our lives. But God, we thank you. We, we ask you to help us in this, in this tragic situation last night, this random act of evil. That God, you know those nine individuals that have been shot. Many of them are injured. All of them are injured. God, we just pray for healing. We pray for uh, you know, emotional healing the scars, the, the trauma that come from that for those that weren't even injured. The moment that it was for all those that witnessed it. God, we said that's for healing. And we thank you, God, for our law enforcement officers for their quick response. And God, we thank you that we have brothers and sisters in Christ all around the world praying for each other. And God, we thank you for this beautiful group of people in Tanzania and what you're doing in Africa. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Check out this video.
I told Pastor Sam, the young guy who's, uh, you know, that's good with the ocean. I said, hey, I'm going to get you here at late point someday. And he's looking forward to being here and to preach for us one day. He's an amazing guy. And I can't wait for you to meet Sam. And so, man, we are going to wrap up this series in the last few minutes here in uh, fruition. And uh, we've been talking about the fruit of the Spirit. We began talking about week one. We talk about this war between our flesh and the spiritual. And there's a war in our side. And every one of us, if you're a follower of Christ, there is a battle happening. And, 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 and Jesus, God, he wants to produce in our lives the fruit of the Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, we don't have time to read all the scripture verses here, but in verse number 22, it's the fruit of the Spirit, right? It's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. We are driven by one of two ways. We're driven by the flesh. All those ugly things in our lives, all those you know, the envy and the, and, the, and the greed and the hatred, all those ugly things. We can be driven by the flesh or we can be led by the Holy Spirit, which is, shows up as love, joy, and peace, and all these beautiful things that we just talk about. Now, unfortunately, though, our default mode, what is natural for us, right, is, is, is to live by the flesh, so if we want to overcome that and live the beautiful kind of life, we're going to need supernatural help. We can't do it on our own. And in other words, and we've said this every week in a series, that little poem, the, the pull of sin is strong, but the living Christ is stronger. So open yourself to his spirit and you will bear his fruit. We cannot perform the fruit of the spirit. On our own. In fact, when we become a believer of, in Jesus Christ, when we become a Christian, Jesus, you know, delegate to the Holy Spirit, you know, he begins to produce all the fruit into our lives. He, to, he plants the seed, you know, into our hearts, and, and the Holy Spirit's job at 24-7 is to cultivate, you know, to, to help foster these fruit, all of them, into our lives. Not some of them. You don't get to pick and choose. You don't get to say, hey, you know, I like, I like to pick, you know, this fruit, love, but I don't want the bananas. I don't want patience. No, 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 no. That's the hardest words in our Christian life. He is producing all of them in our lives. And if you wanted a patient person before you met Christ, guess what? His goal is to make you patient. His goal is to have to produce love in your life and joy in your life. And, and all these things, all the fruit of the Spirit, self-control, gentleness and goodness and faithfulness, he is not stop working in your life. And so there's a difference between, by the way, there's a difference between fruit of the Spirit and spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts, we don't have, not every one of us have all the spiritual gifts. You know, and the spiritual gift. It reveals your ministry. And the difference is that the fruit of the Spirit, what you have all of them planted in your life, they reveal your spiritual maturity. And, and, and so today, as we kind of wrap up this message, I want to notice that there are three types of people here this morning. Three types. And every one of us falls in one of these Categories, and as we kind of wrap up this series on the fruit of the Spirit, we've been talking about every one of these for the last several weeks. It's time to do a fruit check. Time to do a fruit check. You go to the grocery store, right? And you pick up the fruit and you kind of squeeze it. Is it just the right firmness? Is it too firm? Is it too soft, right? You know, I went yesterday and I saw some peaches. I love peaches. And I have the peach stand and I pick up a piece. I said, it's a little too hard. I like it a little bit, not too soft but not too hard. And therefore, I didn't spend the money because I was hungry for a piece right there. I was going to eat it in the store <laughs> or out of the store once I paid for it, right? I mean, I wanted that fruit, but it wasn't, it wasn't right. We, we want to do a fruit check. Do a fruit check in your life and my life. And you're one of three things. And so if you're taking notes, 
You know, I've got, I've got, I've got the food here. Who likes to catch? Corey, you like to catch? Here we go. They said, who else wants to catch? Who else? Can you catch? All right, there we go. Right, one more time. Time back on the catch. Good job, Tom. Right, let me ask you, what, what kind of food? <laughs> Don't throw food at me. <laughs> What, what kind of fruit? Is it real? No, it's fake. It's plastic, right? You got plastic fruit going on. And, and that's the first type of people. We've got plastic people, the plastic person. Or perhaps that's you this morning. You're the plastic person. You look good on the outside, but on the inside, Tom, behave over here, Tom. Tom. <laughs> give me, just give me that fruit right there. <laughs> Uh, keep an eye on him. No pocket knife for you. All right. <laughs> you know, the plastic food, right? They look good on the outside, but on the inside they're empty. Right? They're, 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 they're not real. Jesus had to deal with these kind of people. Remember? You remember who they are? They were the Pharisees. In fact, you see this in the scripture, but Jesus, you know, loved everybody. He really didn't. He loved the Pharisees, but he was tough on the Pharisees because they needed it. Because they were so stuck on themselves. And, and, and in Matthew chapter 23, look at verse, uh, verse number 25. And I kind of skip down to a couple of verses. He said, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. And then he said, it's You hypocrites. He said, You got your fake. That's what that word means fakeness. You're an actor, you're a pretender. He said, he said, you clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside are full of greed, self-indulgence, blind Pharisees. You got to clean first the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside also will be clean. And then he said in verse 27, he, I mean, he, Jesus is preaching at him. He said, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. You hypocrites, in case you didn't hear it the first time, I'm going to say it again. You hypocrites. You're like whitewashed tombs. They look beautiful on the outside. But on the inside, they're full of the bones of the dead. Everything unclean. And then in the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, as super religious, holy. But on the inside, you're full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Pharisees, they were plastic people. They were fake. Notice what Paul said to Timothy about plastic people. He said in 2 Timothy, verse 3, he said, they will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. Stay away from them. Plastic people, they come to church, all dressed up, all shined up, they know the songs, they got their Bible, they got their Jesus smile. They look like from afar, they're producing food, but when you get up close, they do the smell check. You get to see, you know what? They're not as real as they think they are. They're hollow. What they're producing is just processed food. Fake. It's fake. They're the people who have hard hearts. These are the people who have callous hearts. People who act one way on Sunday and they act another way on Monday. They're people who need to know Jesus Christ personally. Oh, they know the game. They know how to act like one, but they are not one. And perhaps that's you this morning. And he said, well, Scott, I've been playing the game for so long. I, 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 I'm, a, I'm a leader in the church. I mean, if I, if I let the cat out of the bag now, it's not good. I mean, I, I've been playing this game, so I can't, I, I can't hurt my reputation. You see, your pride gets in the way. Notice, notice what Jesus says here. In fact, this is what Peter said that we should do if you're a plastic person. 
He said in First Peter chapter 5, he says, humble yourself. Don't let pride get in the way of getting real. Humble yourself. Stop playing the games. Get real about your condition of your heart. Get real. Say, man, I'm a Pharisee. Woe is me. I've been playing the game. He said, humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Are you a plastic person this morning? Are you here? He says, God, I'm a, I act like a Christian, but I'm not one. I'm empty inside. That's the first food check. Here's the second one. I have another group here. And we have a group of people that I like to call the PO person. The PO person. And some of you, you're doing it right now. You know, you're a follower of Jesus Christ. You're not plastic, right? And, 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 and you sit here week in, week out. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa, why are you not up here in the front? There we go. You, you, you hang out the pills. You're listening to stuff. You're not plastic. You're just consuming. You say, hey, the food of the spirit is for me and me alone. Mm. <laughs> Get banana right here. I didn't even finish the first banana in the first server. Man, you guys are watching me eat. It's embarrassing. <laughs> but you sit here week after week. <laughs> and you eat the food. See, the fruit of the Spirit is not for self-consumption. You don't produce it and then eat it. You see, there's a lost and dying world that needs your food. They're not looking for the peels. They're looking for the fruit. Your boss needs it. Your neighbor needs it. Your, your, your friend needs it. But some of us don't know this is all for me. Mine, mine, mine. And, and you sit here week in and week out. You eat, you eat. You say, man, this is good stuff. And you consume and you consume and you consume. And then you become spiritually obese. And then you begin to wonder why, man, I feel so loaded down. I feel like I'm, 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 I'm dragging a barge, spiritually speaking. It's because you're like, what's wrong with me? It's because you, you go to 25 Bible studies every week. You listen to Caleb from sundown to sunrise, right? Sunrise to sundown. Let's do it that way, all right? You, you listen to it all day long, and you wonder, hey, I'm, I'm taking in, I'm taking in, I'm taking in. But you're not doing anything with it. You're just a peeler. You're a peel person. You just love to peel. You love to consume. I've got one. But I'm going to use my knife, my new knife. Great. You know, peel people. You know what they like to do? They just like to show up at church, not get involved. You know? Here, have a peel. You know, they don't want to get involved. They're going to get in small group. They just show up. And then I've got a lemon right here. You know, what they, like, you know what peel people like to do? They eat the lemon. In other words, they like to sit, soak, and sour. Have you ever been around a person that sit, soak, and sour? They're critical people. They're not happy. They just eat the, they eat the food of their spirit. They don't share what God had produced in their life. It's all for them. Do you sit choking sour? His James, the half brother of Jesus, he says this in James chapter 1, verse 22. He says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. We're to live it out, right? 
Notice what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus by the fruit, you will recognize them. A, a, a fruit tree is meant for the enjoyment of others, not just for yourself. Don't be a peer person. It's not for your self-consumption. Here's the third type of people, and this is where I pray you land. Maybe you're the produce person. The produce person. I love what Paul said to the Colossian people. He said in verse, chapter 1, verse 10, the way you live, the way you live will always honor and please the, and please the Lord. Let me ask you a question. Does the way you live honor and please God? Do you please God with the way you live? Do you honor God with the way you live? And then and, and your life, when you do that, your life will produce every kind of good fruit. It starts with pleasing God. It starts with honoring God. And then all the while, at the same time, you will grow, you will blossom. You will become fruitful as you learn to know God better and better. You see, a produce person lives it out. It's a cycle. And then he grows in knowledge and head knowledge. But it doesn't stay there. It comes out into the hand. It comes out in the feet. And he lives it out. He's just not stuck on head knowledge. I love what someone said one time. He said, Knowledge without application is condemnation. You're fooling yourself if you say, hey, I got, I got my degrees, I got all my stuff, I know everything, but you don't live without it, you don't share it. You're missing the point. What challenge to be produce people? The stuff that's just coming out of your life, the people around you, they need it. They need it. And as you live your life, you're walking down the street and you're walking out and you're giving it away. You're giving away the fruit. Have, a, have an orange. Honey crisp apple. Hey, hey I'm going to give you a honey crisp. They're the best apple, man. You like the apple? All right, here we go. Banana. You look like a banana kind of a guy. Here, enjoy. <laughs> You're handing out the fruit. You're handing out the fruit. I mean, I would, I, I would give them out. I mean, the first service, they were begging for them. I had family in the middle and say, hey, I, I'll take that banana, you know. So, <laughs> you know, what do you want? You, you've seen it. You want a banana, don't you? You want an apple? Have an apple. That's a, in the fruit. There you, go. you can have a real orange. Please don't throw it at me. <laughs> You want something? All right, there we go. All right. You want something? Hey, this is, this is the, I'm, I don't know. But this is, this is how we're supposed to be. We're not just called to consume. We're called with the fruit of the Spirit to live it out and to give it out. There's a world that's looking for this. If you're plastic, don't remain plastic. If you're appeal, don't remain appeal. God wants you to produce. God wants to be a farmer's market Christian where you're handing them out over and over, day in and day out. The world is desperate. So question. What are you this morning? Maybe you're here today and you say, Scott, I'm plastic. I look good on the outside. But on the inside, I'm empty. Maybe you're a Christian. You're a peel person. You give the peel, the leftovers. You keep the good stuff for yourself and you and yourself all by yourself. Or are you a produce person? Do you live it out with joy, peace, and love?
gentleness and goodness? Do the world see it? Do they get a hold of it? The world is looking for that. Fresh, juicy fruit. My prayer is that you'll leave here today to be the kind of fruit that God wants you to be. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. 24-7, God, you're working. So God, I pray that we will surrender. Surrender to the spiritual side of the warfare that's inside us. That natural man that wants to overtake. God, I pray that we let the supernatural win and we submit to the Holy Spirit to be the kind of fruit that you want it to be. God, maybe there's someone here today that's a plastic fruit. Maybe they don't know Jesus. On the outside, they look good. On the inside, they're hollow. Today, I pray that they will humble themselves and come down to a relationship with you. God, maybe there's some Christians here to appeal. We sit soaking sour. We don't get plug in, we don't get involved. We just kind of go through the motions. We are self-consumers of the fruit that you are producing in our lives. We don't give it out. God, I pray that we change course, change directions. God, finally, I pray that we will be produce people. That will honor and glorify you in the way that we live. And so, God, we thank you. Help us to surrender to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Before Tom gets up here, I just want to recognize the Amit family. You know, I think about your dad. He was a produce man for 48 years, serving the Lord. He passed away on Friday, fought the battle well. You know, Alicia, where's Alicia at? Yeah, fought well and produced a life. And so many people have been blessed. It's been an honor to know your dad. And so we'll be praying for the Amos family this week. And I'll be praying for you guys in the days ahead. Can we pray for them right now? God, we ask you to be with the Amos, the Wagner, Alicia Wagner, dad, and Matt, dad, grandfather. He served so well for 48 years in ministry, teaching, teaching kids in a Christian school. 48 years. Handing out the fruit. And now today, Lord, he producing perfect fruit in the land of the living. We thank you. We thank you for his family. We thank you for them this week. Help them as they navigate the grief. Help them to remember, but to be thankful that we can and we will see them again. In Jesus' name, amen.